I guess the first question is how would you define uh, unschooling or explain unschooling to somebody? Well, I think to actually understand unschooling, you have to have a pretty clear idea that schooling and education are not the same thing. They're not even distantly related, although superficially they look like the same thing. Schooling is submission to the instructions of other people, almost always people you don't know. Classroom teachers, for example, don't select what they school you in. They transmit orders from, from whom? The principal? No. He takes orders to, from the superintendent? No. He takes orders to, from the State Department of education. No, absolutely not. They take orders too. So your first problem really in coming to terms with the variety of things unschooling is, is to come to terms with the fact that schooling is a rather mysterious process which virtually no one understands its source or the rationale for doing it. The uh, shallow answers that how would you learn to read and write or count without schooling are easily dispelled not only by historical records when Americans dazzled the world when everyone was literate and there were no systematic schools but also from three million modern American homeschoolers who in fact have little difficulty in learning to read, write, and all the rest of the battery because they teach the way people learn. So, unschooling generically is whatever is opposed to building uh, the time you spend developing your mind and character in an unschooled fashion. It is no one thing, it varies from, let me show you what I showed the audience at the IDEC. It varies from a Quebec farmer, his book was published in the last six months and I would urge anyone who wants to know what unschooling to read it, it's Leandre Bergeron's For the Sake of Our Children, published by Wendy Preisnitz in Canada. Mr. Bergeron has a large farm 40 miles north of Montreal, and he has three daughters. The three daughters never had a lesson in their life, nor did they have from birth an instruction from their father or mother. Now, they were protected by their father and mother, but they decided when to get up in the morning, what to do with their time, and finally whether they wanted to make a contribution to family life or not. So much did they want to that unasked, they took over the entire operation of the farm and moved it from a marginal survival operation to a very prosperous place by figuring out businesses that could be generated from inside the farm. The three girls are in their 20s now, all successful. One a horse trainer, one of them an independent freelance art service for TV and magazines, and won the hospitality director of a four-star hotel. You mean they didn't go to college? No, they didn't. They totally were unschooled. So, unschooling means anything that reduces schooling to a minimum 
use of time. Now, schooling has some value. It just doesn't have supreme value. If you're going into combat and you want to know how to dismantle your rifle and reassemble it blindfolded, nothing works as well as being schooled under threat. I know because I was told I was going to do that, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to do that. But three hours later, I could do it as well as anybody, and there's no possibility. You can be schooled to drive a deadly motor vehicle in a few hours, max 10. So you can be schooled to do a lot of things but you can't be educated to take control of your life. Only through unschooling can you do that. The next thing is, what are the strengths as you see them in, uh, for unschoolers? Well, the greatest strength is, excuse me, if you have your wits about you, you can in fact investigate yourself, your neighborhood, the history that appeals to you, and you can figure out what parts of it you want to reproduce in, in your unschooling experience. You can, in fact, teach the way children learn. And not to say everybody who unschools takes advantage of that, but I would say I've been doing this now, speaking around the world for 20 years, and I would say the majority of the people who unschool, not the majority of people who homeschool, but those who unschool, in fact, hit on a custom-tailored formula that works for, you know, boy A and girl B. Actually, girl and boy B are the chief architects of what occurs in unschooling. You just heard what three French Canadian girls did with their unschooling experience. And finally, if you could just share maybe some limitations or cautions that you sure. would have. Sure. If you become a total purist at unschooling and your own will occupies all your time, you're prone, it's not certain this will happen, but you're prone to emerge unbalanced because while you have energy and you have the insight and mental agility of being young, you unfortunately lack the experience with both the world and with history to make your judgments the best you're capable of. You tend to be moved by great enthusiasms to eat up all your time, you know, in one uh, area or another area. And it genuinely helps to have advice from people you trust, not from strangers. And I'm just curious, uh, there are different terms used for unschooling, natural learning, Wendy Presidents uses life learning, uh, unschooling. Do you have any preference personally? I know no, you, you talk I, about open source I, learning. I, I not only, open source appeals to me. So I use it because it helps me to organize what I think is something essential. No expert or set of expert textbooks can punt can possibly offer what in today's uh, uh, talk, I quoted John Stuart Mill as saying, unless you have all points of view on a subject, you have been propagandized. You have to see what the worst critics and the greatest proponents in all the levels in between, in all the countries in the world, and all the epics of history, have to say about something before you can feel that your own 
sovereign spirit can emerge and swim among these things. So it's just as bad to be propagandized by your friends, the people you like, as by your enemies. You need both. Thank you very much, Don. Anything else you want to add, or are we good? I certainly want to add that even though I didn't have the language, I learned these things non-verbally in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by the greatest citizenry in the United States. Go Pittsburgh. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. If, if you ever wanted to get in touch with me and chat or invite me to speak or give a workshop, there are three easy ways to reach me. Uh, first is that from my website, info at johntaylorgatto.com. That's the worst way to do it, because I don't ever look at my website, but someone watches it, and when he feels reliable, he forwards it. Or by facts, I always look at the facts like some savage in the jungle looking at a modern invention. I love to see the little piece of paper come out of the machine. My fax number is 212-721-6124. And finally, you could just call me on the telephone. That's 212-874-3632. Now remember, a lot of times I'm out of the state or out of the country, but I put them in a stack in the order I get them. And just last week, I answered a letter that came six years ago, because that one came to the top. But no, I, I love to hear what you have to say. So if you have something to say, and if I'm in town with any time at all, I'll be glad to